I'm bothered by the thought of you hating your father. I don't like you carrying that around with you. Also, I don't quite feel your father warrants it. This coming from the person who wants to strangle him? <laughs> Can I ask you a very dramatic question? Yes. Why did you have me in the first place? Ah, that is dramatic. Well, it wasn't planned, of course. I thought I couldn't have children. I'd never wanted one. Then, when it happened, we thought your presence could help us come together. And, well, you were a last ditch effort, in effect. But then, when he saw you, it well, clarified something for him. And he turned away forever from you and me, both. But I shouldn't hate him. Your father is an emotional moron, but he isn't evil. What happened when you saw me? Oh, I've never been so hurt by something in my life is when I saw your face for the first time. Why? Because you were your father. Because you were me. Because you were all three of us. So ruinous. And why did you come to me when you did? That was strange, wasn't it? <laughs> it was unexpected. I wanted you to come, you know? But I wanted you to come for so long that when you finally did, I was confused. I'm sorry. I know. But don't be. I was happy. Really? What are you? Yes. I didn't know you were you. I'd have come right away if I had. I'd never have let you go in the first place. You understand what it did for me. Yes. I hope you do. I do. Lucas, Michelle, that's such a great scene that really pulls together everything that the two characters have kind of been not saying to each other for the whole film. Uh, Azazel, uh, you uh, adapted the film from a, a book by uh, Patrick DeWitt, who also wrote the screenplay. Uh, let's talk about this scene and sort of uh, what it says about the film as a whole. How about from the actor's point of view? Because this is really a, a point where you get to say something that most mother-son dynamics never get to work through. Uh, what, what did that feel like after, uh, after having played the characters to this point? It was so heartbreaking because what I, and sometimes you don't even realize what it is you're playing, what the story really is until you're in the moment and then things happen and then you understand. And I, and I thought the, the tragedy of this mother living this narcissistic existence and being absent for so long 
and finally realizing in this moment how much she really loves her son and how much time has been lost that you know she'll never get back and um so it's a very bittersweet moment it, it didn't feel very much like a scene to me it, it, it really just felt like we we got to it, it felt like intimacy um and and uh, i i love i loved that mm -hmm. Uh, Azazel, will you tell us sort of how you uh, how you kind of clicked on this project in the first place? Because if Patrick had written the book and had done the adaptation, was it something that uh, sort of landed in your lap, or uh, did did you uh, come in earlier in the process? It came in pretty very early in the process before the book was finished, because Patrick and I are very close friends, so we share material with each other and really late stages but before things are finished when we can still chime in and uh and this one one i read i immediately just fell for and the, the moment i finished i asked him if i could start working on turning the film so even the the adaptation began as a conversation before the book was finished once michelle and lucas got involved they were really involved in as well in terms of valuing the book taking things that they um cared for and found their helped them get into their characters and then talking with both Patrick and I and so Michelle met, met with Pat and I and so did Lucas and uh, and that kind of really went through all the way through shooting I mean there was uh, the the book would keep going back to and keep finding things that as the, even while we're shooting we realized oh that's actually very, very helpful. And that is actually one of the things that happened in, in this particular scene as well, mm -hmm. in terms of something that was in the script, but mm -hmm. there was one particular section where she says, you know, all th because he goes, why? And he goes, she goes, because you're all three of us, myself, mm -hmm. um, you know, your father, all three of us yeah. are weirdness. And that's really Michelle. I remember sure. harping on you, harping on you and saying, why do I say this? Why do I say this? And then I was reading the book and then there was just this one passage and it was that passage and it was because you were all three of us so ruinous. And I, that's why I said it. And, um, it all, so throughout filming, it was, you know, that process, it was a constant process like that. There's such a beautiful heightened language to the, to the novel and that carries over into the film and, and it must be a real delight to play, but maybe also difficult because, you know, uh, real people don't necessarily talk so eloquently, but these are such educated, you know, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're characters, you know, who are larger than life. Uh, you know, what, um, uh, was that a challenge ever to kind of like fit the, the, that sort of music of their, um, of their dialogue or was that half of the appeal? I, I was daunted by that, and um, I and I and I and as much as I loved this writing and this character, I thought, how how am I going to own this speech? And um, and and then though you 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 just it just becomes you. Well, there's this feeling almost uh, that kind of theatricality to uh, to the character, and it never crosses over into camp, and in and it's but it's big, you know. It's like she's always mm -hmm. on her own stage of her own life, you know. The spotlight mm -hmm. is always on her, and it allows her to kind of monologue sometimes or to mm -hmm. to say these. It's almost you know for someone who's extemporaneously as as clever or as witty as this character, that's a lot to sell um, as an actress. It's a fine line, and 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 sometimes you 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 go under it, and when it should be heightened a little bit more, and sometimes you you cross over, you know, and it's just it's just finding that line really sort of scene by scene, and and I and I do think that that's the the thing about Aza is that he's he's you know he's able to sort of brilliantly combine these very different tones and that was the balancing act that we were wa we were walking continually you know every day on the film and all of the characters really is it would it would go into sort of humor and 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 and, and silliness and and 
right before it's threatening to sort of spiral out of control, you know, Ozza will insert, or, and Patrick, you know, um, moments of melancholy to kind of bring it down to reality. L Lucas, in real life, have you ever interacted with the character anything like uh, the Francis one you're playing opposite? And how did you sort of uh, find your footing? I don't think so. <laughs> they exist. I don't. I, you know, I, I've I, I know maybe one who has a similar kind of like when you look her in the face, it's like you. It feels like you're talking to to like somebody who belongs in the world of like statues in a way like and I don't mean that in a reductive sense I mean I'm just like there's a grandness and a kind of like makes you makes you you sort of feel like a potato standing next to them so um <laughs> so I would say yes maybe but I see all of Patrick's world and I don't see this as, as an exception being a, a world that he's made made up um and and is a, is a reflection of his imagination I, I i'm not somebody who's like you're gonna walk go to the upper east side and see malcolm walking around like you're not gonna um meet a roll doll character on the street like i i, I don't I, I think they they help us they help us understand the world we live in but they're what makes them so exciting is that they're there's a there's a freedom there that we don't encounter in the real world I, nothing pre pre really prepared me for it other than uh michelle's characterization of of francis which 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 was really i mean i'd re i'd read the book a few times and read the script but not until i met the character was i really there with her kind of reminded in the in the scene of that that sort of great scene at the end of call me by your name between you know father and son where there's this kind of impossible oh, conversation cool. that none of us have in the real world of you know kind of things that you know never get to be said and yet the the film this film you know does it in such a surprising way and i think every every admission she makes starts with half of a phrase that makes you think it's going to go one way and then it sort of veers into something very sincere and revealing uh, i mean it's a really tricky moment because you're you're doing this this thing that's not just a catharsis for the character but for anyone who has parents which all of us do you know um uh azazel would you maybe talk at all about uh, just the like you know making sure like we've been talking about treading the line, but making sure you did it from the, the screenwriting point of view in this scene. What you brought up with thinking that Francis is gonna say one thing uh, and then going to a different direction, like Malcolm asking, you know, what was like to, when, she saw, when she saw him, I've never been hurt, more hurt than anything in my own life. It's so surprising to mm -hmm. me that that's what she's gonna say, but it's so direct. And it's like, it's, it's what you're saying to have such a direct conversation. Um, I think it's, is so rare between, especially between parents and their children. And I think at the same time, Malcolm knows that she answers things completely truthfully. So I, I think one of the conversations that Lucas and I had, we, which is like, how long has Malcolm wanted to ask, well, why did you have me? Like, is this the question that he's been carrying for 12 years? And why is it now that he's asking this? And where is that coming from? And is that coming from the place of realizing that the potential, that anger that his mother has is so for, for his father is so deep that she could have killed him. And then I think something that also happens, and maybe this happens at a different place for Michelle, but in my mind, part of this conversation, Francis, Francis is, um, Re letting go of a lot of the hate and anger the, and then the, the desire to kill her husband goes in this conversation. Yeah, I mean, it all sort of circles back. The whole movie is kind of driven by this, this selfishness, this thing that she says about, you know, my plan was to die before the money ran out. And that leaves anyone else, but namely Malcolm, kind of in the lurch. And this is the scene that tells us that he's gonna be okay that he's getting the closure that so many children don't get from their parents. But um, I mean, you really spare us the brutality of what she does in this film, but it's implied and, um, or what she will do, you know? Um, and, uh, and you need this scene to land 
for everything that follows to work, especially in the execution where I really feel like that's from here on out is where the movie really goes its own way. It's, it's presenting the same information in your way from, from the novel. It really was, um, it, it, like, like Michelle said, we waited to the very end of shooting this. So this really was the last day that we're shooting this section in there. So what that, that which is natural, of course, you don't want to dive into something way too early. We're all still getting to know each other and trust each other and, and know these characters and understand it. So by the time we get to this place, the, the best chance of what you're talking about could be, could happen. But also meant that there was this, um, at least this Im immense weight to actually even going into this scene because um, a, a lot of ways it was a goodbye for, for me with, with Francis and with the shooting itself. How did you create that dynamic? Because, you know, there's a, a big jump in time between her picking Malcolm up at boarding school and the next scene where they're at breakfast together. And yet, it's equally plausible in, in that next scene that they've spent kind of every moment of the last years together. That dynamic exists presumably very early in the shooting. Uh, I can see how it pays off that you work up to this big scene, but again, you know, the, there's, there's no lack of that dynamic um, throughout. A lot of what informed even the directing of young Malcolm by that time, I'd spent a good six months talking with Lucas and figuring out and discussing Malcolm. So some of that rhythm just transferred over, I think, in terms of the conversations that I had with, with the young actor that was playing Malcolm. And so that continuation, I found so much just in terms of their walk, in terms of the way that young Malcolm just walks down that hallway that there's something that continues straight over into this next scene that you kind of feel like, okay, from this moment on, it really is the next day that it, even if it's been 12 years later, this is, this is, there's a continuity between these moments that's seamless. It, even in the way that we shot it with the, it kind of starting the same thing with young Malcolm walking away from camera and then older Malcolm walking away from the camera and just replicating that frame so that these things are conjoined to a place where you just feel like, okay, this has been that. This has been the beginning of his life and this has been his entire life. And Lucas and Michelle, would you say anything about your process in terms of building that bond earlier in the, in your shared performance? I mean, if you spent months preparing, did you, were you in conversation with each other during this time? I, I like to think that if you get, if you create a really great world, which was given to us. And you have somebody who helps facilitate that world. And you have two people who really want to be there and are sensitive to it. That's, that's all that is needed for chemistry. Um, I will say that, yeah, we, di we didn't really talk a whole lot. We met once, I think, to read through some of the script. And then we had a little rehearsal time in Montreal. And, um, and I think we've just really loved the story. And we're like, open and vulnerable to the to the project and and Aza was just such a beautiful mother to us. I did of that all of that. <laughs> Congratulations to you all. The I mean the, I think the film really Thank is quite low backed and you make it look uh, you know so natural. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you much. Very much. Appreciate really. it. Thank you.